This Learn Electrics video will look at how we may extend radial circuits. We published a short video on this subject several years ago and since then there have been a new set of regulations and perhaps too it is time to update, extend and improve the content. Social media always has lots of questions on radial circuits and we can address some of these here. Let's just reassure ourselves as to what a radial circuit is. For the purposes of this video, it is quite simply any circuit that leaves the consumer unit and travels to the various points of use and then stops. There can be one point of use, as in a shower or cooker circuit, or it can be several points of use, as we find with lighting circuits and socket circuits. The key thing is, a radial circuit does not return to its starting point. It does not go back to the consumer unit. An immersion heater circuit is a good example of a radial circuit. The wiring goes from its own breaker or fuse in the consumer unit directly to the immersion heater, as does the cooker circuit. These circuits are individual. They go to one point of use and stop. The simple lighting circuit shown here and the socket circuit are both radial circuits too, but this time they serve multiple points of use. When the last point is reached, the circuit stops. With any circuit, we must ensure that the currents flowing in the circuit do not exceed certain ratings and that there is a correct balance between the demands of the appliances in normal circumstances and the ratings of the cables and protective devices. This is covered in much more detail in another video, but for now, it's enough to understand that under normal load conditions, this equation must be satisfied. We start by establishing what the design current of the appliance is. We can then choose a circuit breaker or fuse rating, and this is often called an OCPD in the regulations, short for an overcurrent protective device. Now look at the mathematical symbol. The OCPD rating must be equal to or greater than the designed working current of the appliances. And now for I, Z, the current carrying capacity of the conductors, taking into account the installation conditions, ambient temperature, thermal insulation, etc. The cable rating must be equal to or greater than the rating of the fuse or circuit breaker, never smaller. So, find the design current, choose a breaker that is at least as big as or bigger than the design current, and then select a cable that has a current rating equal to or bigger than the breaker that you've chosen. This table shows some examples of IN and IZ for different usages. It is by no means a complete list, just an example to help with the video. This table is based on reference method C, or clipped direct, the simplest of the different installation conditions. As we start to pass the cable under loft insulation, through thermal walls, running in trunking, etc., the rating of the conductors will reduce. The current carrying capacity of the cable will be reduced and we may have to consider a larger CSA to cater for the same current. The appliance load will stay the same. It is the maximum current that we can put through the conductors that has reduced. An immersion heater should be on its own individual circuit. A 3 kilowatt or 13 amp device should be protected by a 16 amp circuit breaker or fuse. The design current is 13 amps. The fuse rating is 16 amps, so the equation is OK so far. The cable size should be 2.5 square millimetres, which will handle about 27 amps, so the cable rating is bigger than the breaker rating. Again, the equation is correct. 13 amp load, 16 amp breaker, and a 27 amp conductor. What happens at the 13 amp FCU in the immersion heater circuit. A 13 amp heater with a 13 amp fuse, that is OK, the equation is correct. And 1.5 square millimetre flex that will take about 20 amps of current, that is OK too. We have 13 amps, 13 amps and 20 amps, all good. The cooker next. The cooker will consume around 30 amps at full load, 
not allowing for diversity. So the 32 amp breaker is more than adequate. Good practice and building regulations recommendations tell us that a 6mm twin earth cable should be used for a 7 kilowatt cooker. The circuit should be a dedicated cooker circuit, just for the cooker. A cooker control switch should be installed which can be cooker only or have an integrated 13 amp socket outlet built into it. Lighting circuits may only have 2 or 3 amps of design current, especially with modern low energy lamps, and will be protected by a 6 amp breaker or 5 amp fuse using 1.5 mm or 1 mm twin and earth cable. Some electricians will use a mixture of 1.5 and 1 mm cable. They will use 1.5 square millimetre for the loop cables from the consumer unit to the ceiling rows and to the next ceiling rows and so on and then they will install one square millimetre cable for the switch drops. This helps with quickly identifying which cables are the loop and which are the switch. We can look at sockets now. This is what we are asked many times. Can I add sockets? Can I add lights? And so on. There are usually two cable sizes of interest to us. 2.5 square millimetre and 4 square millimetre. 2.5 cable can be protected by either a 16 amp or a 20 amp breaker, with 4 millimetre cable being protected by a 32 amp breaker. This is for reference method C, clipped direct, and IZ, the cable's current carrying capacity, will reduce depending on the installation method used thermal insulation, thermal walls, etc. Meaning that an increase in conductor CSA may be needed in some circumstances. We should always design for the worst case expected. If the worst case is a safe circuit, then anything else is going to be safe too. And also remember that the regulations recommend that a double socket outlet should not be loaded above 20 amps. Yes, there are two 13 amp outlets per unit, but we should not be using it for two 13 amp devices. It would be bad practice to plug two 13 amp room heaters into the same double socket outlet. Now we come to cable sizes for socket circuits and how we can lay out the circuit. We begin with a 16 amp or 20 amp breaker, or it might be a 15 amp or 20 amp fuse. We treat them all the same for this bit. In the circuit shown, we have a 16 amp breaker, so all the cabling should be in 2.5 square millimetre twin and earth. Everything. Because the conductors can take up to 27 amps, and the fact that they are protected by a 16 amp breaker means that there is no rule to consider regarding how many spurs come off the cable. How many spurs on spurs we have, whether they are single or double sockets, treble sockets even, if required. Any arrangement of single or double socket outlets is permitted. We can have sockets spur into other sockets and we can have junction boxes being used to spur onto sockets. The only thing that does matter is a common sense consideration of circuit length and the eventual maximum ZS at any point on the circuit. So, a 16 or 20 amp breaker with 2.5 square millimeter cable throughout the circuit and do not load any individual double or treble socket to more than 20 amps. Now consider a 32 amp breaker or a 30 amp fuse. Cable size matters. Now there is an order to follow. The main trunk of the wiring should be in 4 square millimeter twin and earth, which I've shown here as a thicker dark grey line. Starting at A at the top, we can position a single or double socket outlet anywhere on the main 4mm trunk. We are not going to demand more than 20 amps from each double socket and the cable will take about 37 amps as reference method C. At position B, we have another double socket on the radial trunk, with several double and single sockets as spurs. This is OK as the wiring connecting each of them is also in 4 square millimeter. This is 37 amp cable, and if we go above 32 amps total for the whole circuit, the breaker will trip before the cable is damaged. At position C, we have another double socket as a spur, 
output. Now the cable to the spur is reduced to 2.5 square millimeters. Because of this reduction in CSA, we are now limited to just one spur off the trunk. This can be a double socket spur, as shown, or a single socket spur. If the cable size is reduced to 2.5 square millimeter, then just one socket unit is allowed as a spur off the 4 millimeter trunk. Shown at position D, we have come off the trunk with a junction box, and it's perfectly okay to do this. This takeoff position might be in a loft, and perhaps you don't need a socket just there. The cable size has been reduced to 2.5 mm and a single socket installed. That is where the circuit must stop. We cannot add more cable and a second single socket. This is two socket units, and two separate sockets are not allowed with a 32 amp breaker. We might plug a 13 amp room heater into each socket. We can change the first single to a double, that's OK, but the second one is a no-no. And lastly, at position E, we have a 13 amp FCU, or fused connection unit, direct onto the 4mm trunk. Because this has been refused to 13 amps, we can reduce the cable size to 1.5 square millimeter if we wish, and install any reasonable number of single or double sockets. The cabling is protected by the 13 amp fuse. Can we spur lighting from a socket circuit? Yes we can, if that is the only way to get lighting into an area. It may be a conservatory built off a dining room, and it is all but impossible to extend the lighting from the dining room into the new conservatory. Again, size order matters, and we show some examples here. In normal circumstances, you would only extend to one lighting spur. We've shown three as an example of different methods. The circuit breaker here is a 32 amp device, but the same rules apply to 16 amp or 20 amp breakers. At X, we've come straight off a socket that is on the 4 mm radial trunk and into a 3 amp FCU using 2.5 mm twin and earth. 3 amp now, not 13 amp. We can come out of the FCU in 1.5mm cable and into a switch to supply the lamp. At Y, from a junction box in 25 cable and into a 3 amp FCU as before. Out of the FCU on 1.5 square millimeter cable and into the ceiling rows as a three plate wiring method. Position Z is a little different and can be common in conservatory extensions. A switched FCU is mounted onto the 4 square millimeter radial trunk and refused at 3 amps. Because it's switched, the FCU is now the light switch and we can come out of this in 1.5 square millimeter cable. Any of the methods work and are acceptable. Just remember that cable size matters depending on where in the circuit is connected. Let's go back to the lighting spur that comes off the socket and the lighting spur taken from the junction box. We have 4 square millimeter cable on the radial trunk, 2.5 between the socket and the FCU, and then 1.5 after the FCU. Three different sizes of cable. This is because the cable should always be an appropriate size at each point on the circuit. Except that there is a regulation that allows us a little leeway. Regulation 433.2.2 tells us that if the 2.5 square millimeter cable going from the socket to the FCU is less than 3 meters in length, then it can be just 1.5 square millimeters in size. But there must be no branches in the cable and no outlets of any kind. Just a simple piece of cable from the socket or junction box to the 3 amp FCU and not more than 3 meters in length. We can have a summary of the main points. Do remember that extending any circuit requires careful consideration of cable sizes, expected loads and current carrying capacity of the conductors. Be aware of ZS requirements and insulation conditions such as thermal insulation, grouping of cables and ambient temperatures. Each circuit will have its own individual requirements. 
A radial circuit goes from the supply to the points of use and stops. Radial circuits can be dedicated to one piece of equipment or serve several similar points of use. Radial socket circuits can be extended by following certain rules. A 16 amp or 20 amp socket circuit wired entirely in 2.5 square millimeter twin and earth can be extended without any other requirements or changes. A 32 amp socket circuit with the radial trunk in 4 square millimeter twin and earth can have any number of spurs that are also connected together by 4 square millimeter cable. A spur from the 4 millimeter trunk in 2.5 millimeter cable can have one single socket or one double socket. No more. Two singles do not count as one double. A 13 amp FCU from the radial trunk can be wired in 1.5 square millimeter twin and earth and have several socket outlets, all protected by the 13 amp fuse. Lighting spurs can be added. Use 3 amp FCUs or 3 amp switched FCUs. And always select a cable rating adequate for the expected loads. We hope that you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.